Okay, perfect. So, <clears throat> again, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Christian Acosta, agricultural educator from Cornell Cooperative Extension, Allegheny County. And today I'm happy to present this introduction to gardening in New York State. So let's start with the presentation. And in the middle of the presentation, uh, I will have just a space for, for questions if you have. Okay. Well, if you have questions when I'm talking, so feel free to ask in the chat. And well, let's start. So, <clears throat> what are we? Um, what are we? Yeah, uh, talking about today. So, the gardening in tropical areas versus in New York State and how and when to start my garden in New York State and tips and recommendations for starting our garden in New York State. One sec, okay, perfect. So why gardening in New York State? So probably because we moved to New York State, we come from another areas, and especially when we come from tropical areas, that is totally different to be gardening, to be um, developing our own garden, just developing some agricultural activities around here. And we don't know like many things, parameters and the climate and many, many factors that we need to know in order to have to be successful in this and not just being uh, a little disappointed after a time trying and well this is something that at some point we we have to experience but that's why we are here today and another reason to be gardening in new york state is because the for for example this report new york state is a uh, the home to over 33,000 families, uh, family farms producing some of the best food and beverage, beverage around uh, this area. And also, like I mentioned before, because we moved to the area and because also we are growing our own food, we know what is what we are applying uh, about pesticides about if we are going to do it or organic and we know what we are uh, growing in here and also because it saves money so yeah we need to use some money to just for our tools and seeds uh, also our time and working in our garden but if we are successful and we have a good production a good harvest so just doing the math you are going to save money and also it's that like that happiness that uh, it's rewarding when you see the tomatoes the vegetables and it's just produced by yourself so this is satisfaction about producing your own food so this is one of the reasons so now let's see just some of the difference, different, some differences between gardening in tropical areas and versus New York State. So this is where, like, not everybody uh, know about this. So, for example, tropical areas. So when we are talking about tropical areas, is all all the area between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. It means the tropics uh, close to the um, Equator line. So usually this, in these areas is a constant temperature and it means no seasons, just all year round is the same temperature and you just need to move to different areas if you want a hot environment or cold environment or just like in the middle, not hot, not too cold. And there is, so one advantage about this is that you can start uh, producing any time of the year and you can have your production all year round and uh, for in the tropical areas it's more about being attentive for uh, storms when it's it just dry or just a lot of precipitation a lot of water uh, but other than that you can start <clears throat> all 
every any time something that we cannot do here in new york state right because in the other side so here we have the seasons and there are extreme temperatures that we have with perfectly uh, summer 93 degrees fahrenheit or even higher than that and less than six months we can be like negative five like just a couple of weeks ago. So this is extreme in plants. They don't grow in, for example, negative five Celsius, right? So this is something that, okay, is a difference. Uh, that this is the difference between a tropical area and, and here. We need to plan our garden in order to be successful, to have a good harvest. And so here, of course, when it's a tropical area, we can plant it's a the we have more uh, vegetables uh, variety to vegetables fruits and we have more options to plant to grow and here well we need to pick what what can we grow in here so also we have a lot of vegetables and fruits and we have a lot of plants around here but comparing tropical area and here so we have of course is we need to plan, we need to be uh, reading a lot about what we are going to grow and see if this plant is going to be happy and growing, happy and being productive in this area or not. It's just an example. If I want to start growing avocados, it's something that unfortunately we cannot do here in New York State, right? Because it needs like long, uh, long it's slow, the the production and it needs a temperature way higher than here. So this is one of the examples. Also, something that we have here in, in your state is the microclimates. And probably if you are living around here in your state, you have realized this and is that we can be perfectly uh, in this area, for example, here and five minutes driving, not probably, up to like in the hills uh, is now like snowing a lot when just here is barely snowing and sometimes we have areas where it's raining a lot and it's like a storm raining pouring and we just dr go driving 10 minutes and then another area is just totally dry so we have here this different microclimates and this is another thing to consider in order to grow our plants. It, about soil, so soil, water, in tropical areas, it, the soil and water, it tends to be more acid. Here we have um, acid soil between four, uh, four um, and seven pH. Remember that the pH is, the, is how we measure uh, how acid or basic is the soil. And, but the water, we have hard water. So usually it's high in, the hard water is high in magnesium and calcium. So this is another parameter to be, to take in mind when we are going to start our garden. So <clears throat> here, for example, if we can see here to the left, we have a, um, a tropic, a, tropical crops under a greenhouse condition. So in greenhouse condition like this to the left, this is not from like David was asking a minute ago, not from uh, the greenhouse that was in Fillmore. Uh, in this case, it's just um, another greenhouse. This is just taken from, from the internet. And now something that we have here also in New York State is the production of banana uh, under a greenhouse condition. So these tropical crops usually like how we are growing that here. So of course, these companies with a lot of uh, money, a budget for to do that, it's possible in this greenhouse, they have everything under control. So in a greenhouse condition, the temperature, the light, um, everything that you can think about the plant, the air, the light, the water, the nutrients, uh, pollinators everything is controlled so of course this is the cost of production for this is higher but well we can produce but 
just in our house if we are just moving to this area and we want to plant uh, our garden so of course we don't have all this uh, budget and all this big greenhouse uh, so what we can do in this case like i was mentioning before we need to just learn from our environment and this is what we are doing today just learning about new york state so if i'm new here so how can i plant my garden so here we need to just plan our garden just being studying our environment uh, the temperature if we are we if we have some microclimates in our area and in this case we need to wait for the warmer months right so something that in tropical areas it's not necessary always to have a greenhouse and wait for um, to plan our garden and to do all this is just we can do it just in open field and start any time of the year if there is no storm or anything like that so this is a different if you come from a tropical area this is something that you cannot do here but it doesn't mean that we cannot do our garden of course we can have our gardens and successful garden a garden about ornamentals a vegetable garden so don't worry yes we can do it and be successful about this we just need to take some extra steps so when and how to start my garden in new york state so the first step is planning so here for example we have uh, examples about the early dates for, to be planting and transplanting and that is around april 15 uh, just after um, the last frost and so we can this 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 information is about the Ithaca area so again remember that we have microclimates so probably these dates can be uh, before or later it depends in the area where you are going to start your garden so we have the plants here if we want to plants for example the beans eggplants uh, peppers so just around may like in the middle of may uh, but remember that also we can start our plants indoors uh, just in indoor conditions and then just being ready to just match the dates until we can just move the plants outside so we can be taking some advantage just growing our plants well it depends if you want to start from seed or if you want to start just from the ceiling going to buy seedlings in a greenhouse so this is an example also the late the last uh, seeding and transplant dates so just in case that uh, you forgot or you just start your garden uh, so what is the late the latest that i can be for this so this are, and this is another example um, you can take just a screenshot right now or i will we are recording this so this recording is going to be in the uh, cce allegheny county youtube video youtube account so this video is going to be there and you can watch again anytime you want so this is the plants that we have and the dates that we have for planting here in new york state so something that we recommend uh, definitely especially if you're moving to a new area a new uh, house a new area is just take us some samples and make a soil analysis so this analysis is before starting your garden or if you have your garden you can do it like once every year for example and this is very important to know how healthy is our our soil or our substrate even if we are just planting in in pots and not directly outside it's all also is always um, helpful to know about how healthy is our our soil our substrate so if you don't know like how can i take a sample just go around like this is an example here in the in this image and you look for the, the place where you want to start your garden and then you can take different samples that this can be a couple feet apart and if this is a 
homogeneous area it means if you see that everything grows uh, same like almost the same and if you see you just can by eye tell when something is different an area is different than another one even being in the same property so if you see that if it's dry or that in general the plants are having the same behavior so okay it's we we have a homogeneous area but if it's heterogeneous area it means that a patch here close to my house is growing different than another patch here in the other side of my house so it's different soil different uh, the condition of this the soil the substrate is different from here to here so uh, we ha we need to just take a couple samples to take the samples is just with the help of some tool a hoe for example we can remove just the first um, the first part of the first layer of the the soil so like grass or if we have a lawn so we just remove the first part and then we go digging a little bit just is not more than a um, couple inches and then taking a sample of the soil this can be two to four cups of soil and then just put in a plastic bag or in a container closed container uh, rem for this one is like the best uh, like the recommendation is to first <clears throat> take the sample and let it dry so it's going to be uh, easier to take to the laboratory also uh, just remove uh, roots and rocks and animals like for example some worms or some insects that you can find in there just remove and uh, only the soil you're going to put in the plastic bag to send to the laboratory and where we can where, where we can have these soil analysis so this anal uh, this kind of analysis analysis we can take them to the closest uh, cooperative extension office and always we are happy to help and we send the sample to the laboratory and just a couple days later you have the results with the recommendation uh, recommendations depend it depends if you're planting just vegetables or ornamental flowers or fruits so the recommendations are uh, just for whatever you want to to grow in that space so this is definitely a recommendation to to start before uh, planting your garden the soil amendments so after we got our results from the laboratory we can now we can start making decisions about if for example i uh, i want to plant tomatoes and potatoes and just vegetables this this time uh, okay so now how how healthy is my 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 soil so i do i need to reduce the ph do i need to increase the ph do i need to uh, change the 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 soil right now if we need to work on the soil and change some parameters from from the soil uh, if we have problems with probably some elements uh, that is too high for example in nitrogen or is too low in nitrogen so we need to in this way we need to start just moving like what do i need for my plants so uh, this soil amendments is when you are correcting the ph or um, putting more organic matter changing the soil structure remember the structure from the soil it's if it's for example too hard in the soil so we go with the tractor or just by hand we can just change this the structure but the texture that is how the quantity of uh, lime uh, clay we have in the soil that we can just feel we just with our fingers we can feel the texture it's something that we cannot change we can change it just the structure of the soil and if it's possible just also make uh, take a sample and send to the laboratory about water because it's important to know the quality of the water if we already know and so it's okay no problem and if you because water is well a little more demanding about the the analyze analysis the analysis for water so in that case okay you just try to see just 
you can start just with something like the plants in your indoors and in this way you can start just playing with the water and see what what it is changing because sometimes if we use for example water from the tap uh, if it's it has chlorine fluor and also if we use um, a softener so the elements in the water can be affecting the plant and sometimes we think that it's fertilizer that it needs um, that it's probably a fungus that it's uh, it, the plant is just being affected by something different and sometimes it's just the water the quality of the water so that's something to take in mind the second step is about planting or transplanting so we are making the decision we are going to start our plants this year for from seeds or for or just going to the greenhouse and getting the the seedlings so if we are just starting from seed so just you buy the the seeds right and before just planting and taking all this time and money and effort and everything in planting your seeds the recommendation here the tip is make a germination test is something simple in the if you don't know how to make a germination test we can you can go to the platform the website the corona cooperative extension allegheny county website in the gardening section there is um one of the sections that talk about uh, seeds seed germination and it's so simple it's just taking a sample from your seeds and then just in a plastic bag with a paper towel a wet paper towel and putting some seeds in there so then you close it and you check after a couple of days so how many seeds are are just actually germinating so in this case you know the percentage if the seeds are in good condition or not if they are not and you need to get new ones and this is something that it's going to save you time and so for seeds you can start the the seeds indoors and that is going to also save you time and the plants can be just growing and being ready to have these seedlings for the moment when finally after the frost finally we can move them and start moving them uh, outdoors and also always because we can talk here uh, and you can be you know, here about this kind of zoom talks for example or in the cornell cooperative extension you can read uh, in, on inter in the internet about for example, tomatoes, they need to grow in this temperature with this, 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 and uh, well, you can read all the requirements and that you're going to have tomatoes in, for example, 60 days. But if you buy a different variety, different, a hybrid or another one that is different, uh, you're like, okay, now what? Like I was fo following uh, instructions, something that I read from this book or this website and now it's different so because of this always have in mind take in mind that everything every plant is different and we have also hybrids we have different varieties different uh, plants so because of this always read the envelope and follow the instructions or recommendations from the envelope so you always usually in the back of the the envelope you can uh, read all the requirements about temperature about how many days for harvest and everything about that plant and if it's in this case when we start from seeds we need to do a process that is the hardening of that is something that i'm going to explain in a little bit and this is really important to have this successful uh, step between taking the plants from the indoors condition to outdoor condition and this is just very a very important step because sometimes we start growing the seeds indoors and then you we move it move, move them definitely outside and they just it's a shock a term about temperature about everything it's a shock for the plants and they can die so to avoid this i'm going to explain what is this process about hardening off if you don't know what is this about and the second option, if we are buying plants from the greenhouse, we are going to actually get just the seedlings. Um, 
Okay, so in that case, the recommendation, the tips is just getting seedlings uh, from local uh, greenhouses, from local uh, nurseries, uh, because this means that the plants are already adapted to this area. Sometimes we can buy plants from another states, which just on internet is so easy to buy plants, but they are like they are used to, they are adapted to another uh, temperature, different environmental conditions, different temperature, about the quality of water, about the soil, about everything. And we, when we move them here, when we finally receive that box and we open and plant, they don't do well. And sometimes when they do, it's just hard to be, to be growing these plants. So it's easy if you go just to the, the, the close, the closest uh, greenhouse and also you're supporting just local businesses, right? So just check when you're in this process and you're there, just check for the plant that is healthy and that it doesn't have, it doesn't look sick, that is not full of insects, that is, you don't need to be an expert about plants, about pest, pest management and all this. You can just, for example, just take in the, the plant and check not only like this, oh yeah, sometimes the plants look beautiful just when we take a look like that. But sometimes we, if we see, we can see underneath the plant, you can, we just go and touch the plant and move it. And you can see sometimes the insects are just hiding in there, in the plant. And if they have some leaves that they are turning yellow or some spots that definitely it doesn't look like healthy or is not normal so just no so even if it's the last plant in the greenhouse and you really wanted that one just avoid that because a little spot that is already sick with some fungus or some disease that can spread and is not definitely is not fun uh, when you have a plant and actually that makes another plant sick around your, your garden. So just avoid that, that step. Be very picky about your plants and just pick healthy plants. And it depends if you like where you, you buy the plants, you probably you need to do the hardening of a step. If, well, this, even if it's the same area in New York State, but remember about the microclimates. So if we have a different, for example, we live on the top of the hill and the plants are in, down, like in another same area, but down the hill. So in this case, probably we need to take care about this process hard enough, but it's just faster than when we start from, in, from seeds indoors. And also prevent your plants from thermal shocks. And this is, for example, right now, if we are going to buy a house plant, a house plants, a, just any plant that we want to grow indoors, a, just these low temperatures that can really damage and harm your plants, even for one minute or two, because this is something that happens that we go and for example, again, I have, this is my plant, my example, and I have this plant and I want to buy from the store and just a quick running from the store to the car, just one minute, but one minute it's, it is enough to, to harm the plant because it's already in 60 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And then immediately from one second to the next, the plant is exposed to negative five or 20 degrees. So it's a thermal shock and the plant is going to suffer. And sometimes it depends the variety or the, of the, or the plant is going to die. So we, we are losing our plants, just taking them from the store to the car. So in that case, we need to wrap the, the plant and just prevent them to, to get this cold wind. Okay, now what is the next step for the, heart, the, the process of having our own garden in New York State? And is the hard enough? But before, before this, and let me, the recording. 
<clears throat> okay, for the third step that is hardening off. So what is that? It's just the process to move the plants from indoors to outdoors. That's it. It's simple. Uh, so it's so simple. How to do that? Just first put the plants that they are already indoors. So just put when it's finally after the the last frost. Uh, again, it, this depends about your area, about uh, the microclimates. It this can be. I'm not giving you exactly like May 14, for example, uh, because this can take more time or less time in your area. So after the last frost, after we see that everything is just finally coming to life again, green. Uh, okay, now it's time to start moving the plants outside. So. In this case, we start moving our plants or our seedlings uh, outside just to a shady area. This can be under a greenhouse condition or if we have uh, just out of the house, but not in direct, uh, direct sunlight. Just in a shady area, we, we can just take the plants for one hour, two hours, and then taking them back indoors. Okay, this for the first day. The second day, we can just make again the same do the same process and now for three hours for example three four hours and okay after this just take them back inside again and then just doing the same process just increasing six hours eight hours or ten hours uh, it de this it depends about the plants so if we have just plants that they are hardy ones uh, well we don't need to be like very picky about one hour, two hours, three hours. We can just do two the first day, for example, the next day four, uh, the next day eight, and then like this. But not all of the plants, they they are that um, strong enough. So sometimes we need just to be patient and have like, for example, a week to be hardened enough. The first day, the second day, until finally we can leave the plant just let the plants outside uh, for one day and one night. Okay, after this process, now we're going to repeat the process, but now taking the plants from the shady area to the, the permanent place, so directly to the garden. So the first day, just one, one hour, uh, the next day, three hours, five hours, until finally is just changing from the the shade the shady area to the direct sun or the permanent permanent place where you want to place your plants and if you are bringing plants from the greenhouse so this is already this step is already done they are already outside right uh, I, I mean about the nursery if it's a greenhouse so we need to start moving the plants because remember that under greenhouse conditions sometimes the temperature are, high, are higher than outside and sometimes they also do this process so uh, lowering the the temperature inside the greenhouse so you can just ask about the temperature if you if you are buying in a greenhouse you can just feel free about asking about what is the temperature or just take um, a thermometer or these devices that you can check directly what is the temperature and what is the humidity in the place so you can know what what is already the temperature and humidity for the plants in that place and you need in that case you need you can know if you need to do this process or not uh, usually you don't need to do this when you buy directly from the nursery you just bring the plants home just check that uh, it's the plants are free of some disease and just go and plant directly to the garden that's an advantage that we can do but if we want to start from the seed, that is also a nice, a nice process to see how everything starts from day one until finally we have our harvest. That is something that you also can enjoy this process. Okay, so now finally, when we, after the hardening off, we have the plants outside in the garden and we finally are just happy to see our garden starting our garden.
and now it's the time to take care of the plants so now we see all the plants there now how to take care of them we need to start doing some cultural practice in this case what is all this about so the this can be daily or it depends how uh, the requirements, how susceptible or how strong the plant is and the requirements for this, this crop, if this can resist uh, some dry days about being dry or if it's raining a lot. Uh, so all these you're going to reach it. All the, we are not saying all this because it's like too hard to uh, teach all this in just one hour but when i mention all this about requirements uh, removing weeds the fertilizer how much fertilizer uh, do i need to apply to my plants and uh, about all these parameters you can reach uh, you can search uh, online so always tomatoes requirements from tomatoes and you always are going to find all these requirements the temperature uh, water uh, the quality of the water, what the tomato needs, what the potato needs, what this plant needs, the flowers, if we want to plant flowers. So what do we need? And especially what they need. So we can remove seed, uh, weeds, we can be fertilizing, we can be watering. All these are the cultural practice. And if we have, for example, again, talking about tomatoes or beans or green beans that they need to be um, they need to be um, like hooked to with a rope or well there are different ways to just with a stick or just directly with some rope so if we need to be hanging the plants uh, about controlling the wildlife remember that about pest is just or organisms that they can be just small ones, insects or even the microorganisms. And, but also here in these areas, we have deer, we have um, bear, we have um, raccoons, we have bigger animals that they are also pests, but they for our plants. And so we need to take care about this. If we have deers around, so what we need to start doing about that. So just covering our plants, just putting some fence around. Uh, what do we need to do that? So also to take in mind how to control the wildlife, how to protect our plants. And also the pest management, that is how to protect our plants, but now in a small, as a small scale, uh, just about insects or fungus or some nematodes or multiple microorganisms that are out there and maybe can uh, be affecting our plants. So all this is the cultural practice. And if you want to know more about this, like one by one, always be um, uh, stay tuned for the clinics, for classes, for many activities for that the Cornell Cooperative Extension Office always are offering every year we are always doing programs about this not only in allegheny county also in all the area in new york state you always can find it, even in other states always can find the cooperative extension offices and always be learning about this is fascinating you can take years and after in my case more than uh, 10 15 years about been learning about about this since i started the the career even before starting my career just learning and you can be years and years working with this and you still learn something new so this is something fascinating about um, nature because it's just organic it's natural and this is something so rewarding at the end so the fifth step what we are going to do is finally the step when we are happy and is rewarding and is the harvest and the post harvest step. So finally, after, if we take good care of our plants and we do the cultural practice for them, uh, finally, about the end of the summer and fall and the end of the fall, we are just harvesting. And it depends how late or early you start so you can be picking, like getting more um, tomatoes, more 
plants, more vegetables, more greens, more lettuce, more about this harvest. It means more food. And if you're planting, for example, flowers or some ornamental plants, so we are just going to enjoy the, the flowers, enjoy the beautiful colors and enjoy our plants. So something to, to take in mind, probably the only um, recommendation at this point about harvesting is just, you can just Google it about if my plant is climateric as we as you can see here in this slide this is climateric or non-climateric fruits so what is this about and it's just climateric is just an example a tomato you can pick the tomato green and it's it will continue its process and get a uh, ripen uh, after a couple this can be days or weeks so in this way we have more time so you don't need to wait until the tomato is completely red to take the tomato from the plant because uh, then you have just a couple days to use that tomato or you will if you don't do something else about it uh, fungus and bacteria they are going to start enjoying your tomato so it means that you cannot eat the tomato but if you pick it the tomato green so you have a uh, different stages and you have more days and even weeks to finally enjoy your your tomatoes this is just an example uh, another example about non-climateric fruit and uh, for example a kiwi uh, no kiwi it's also climateric grapes this is something that doesn't happen for example with grapes or with the strawberries and in that case yeah you need to wait until the the strawberry is completely in red it's ripened so in that case you can enjoy the strawberry so this is an example about what is climateric and non-climateric so the ones to the left are the ones that you can harvest even if they are not like ready to be consumed uh, apples avocados bananas like i was mentioning the example about the tomato uh, the kiwis uh, even the blackberries so these ones <clears throat> they give you the advantage that you can take the the fruits when they are still uh, green when they are not ready yet and you can be saving this this harvest these um, fruits and vegetables uh, okay that's that's going to be ready for a couple of days or weeks but um another ones that they are not in this category is for example here the grapes cherries the peppers cashews strawberries or the lemons so in this case uh, you need to wait until they are finally ripened and they are ready to be um, consumed if not you're not going to enjoy these ones so this is very important about time about how much time do I have uh, to sell my product or to storage my product or to process my my product what is my product the result from your harvest so this can be your uh, for example about tubers uh, potatoes and most of vegetables you need to use them uh, fresh right and if not you need to dehydrate in order to preserve this food for more time and well, this is about the the harvest, and this is the favorite our favorite part where fine when finally we can eat our products, eat our fruits and vegetables and something that we were growing, and you actually you enjoy it even more than just buying gross, uh, the products from the store. Also, they are, can be healthy if you are just using organic products. It's healthy, and you are you are. Um, you, you know that is healthy that is organic and the, it's healthy for you you're going to enjoy more and the last step is when you see you still have some plants and you and well okay they are still producing fruit and you don't want to just leave them in there for for the winter and so we need to start this like the hardening of process but now the reverse that the word is uh, acclimation so we need to and um, start bringing the plants inside again so herbs ornamentals and even some vegetables they can br 
they can be brought to indoor conditions again. Uh, so for this, in this case, it's not so hard and the thermal shock is not so hard like when we are moving the plants indoors to outdoors but still we need to like just adapting the plants for the new environment again so in that case that can be uh, faster we just move the plants from the permanent uh, permanent place from the garden to now the a shady area and this and then just the same couple days couple hours until finally we we have just one day in the shady area and then we can just move the plants indoors when we move the plants indoors uh, now especially for the winter remember that we the the humidity is different and we have the furnace furnace running so in that case the percentage of hum humidity in the house is just very low so in that case for many herbs and especially ornamental plants, we need a humidifier close to the plants and you can put them even closer outside. Yeah, you, they need space, just they need a space. Um, but indoors, you can put just the plants closer and put a humidifier. So in that case, you try to create a, like a mini environment for the plants. And also you can help with an LED growing lights or fluorescent lights because also rem remember that we don't have the same uh, quantity of light, the same sunlight in the, in the winter. And, and then, so check for the plants that they need to have some cold days. So there are some plants, that, especially bulbs, plants, uh, flowers, and for just an example, the elephant ear. Uh, these bulbs they need to be in a period where they lose their leaves and ju just keep the bulbs and they also need a couple days or even some period of time where they need to be in these freezing temperatures so in that case after this you can move the plants indoors again and it's something that you are going to be reading about uh, your plants this is each plant is different, so we are here explaining like the steps, step by step, but about the just individual requirements for, for example, potatoes, tomatoes, eggplants, uh, flowers for, for orchids, for the houseplants, each one by one, they have different requirements. So it's something that you need to be reading about. And if your plant is totally okay, for example, the strawberries, they can overwinter and uh, next year they are coming to life again and producing more strawberries. No problem about that. But sunflowers or tomatoes or uh, basil, the another herbs and plants, they are not going to uh, they are going to die. They are not going to be hardy enough to overwinter. So this is something that reading about our plants, we can we can know if we, it's okay to leave them outside or not. And when finally the the end of the fall, the winter comes, it's the time to prepare your own compost. So before starting your compost, uh, just check for the plants that. Uh, for these couple months, you see which plants they are healthy and they are okay, and the plants that they are just full of fungus or any other pest. So just remove diseased plants. They are not good for composting, and just take the healthy ones. So yeah, you can finally that moment when you can just take the plants and move to the compost, and. Um, you can use the a composter that now commercially you can find composters even for uh, small spaces for houses for just tiny ones and also big ones and well you can buy one of these ones if not you just like here in this example in this picture to the right uh, just you can with a couple pieces of wood or even in the open field, you can start your compost. Um, you can use the remains from your harvest, the plants, remember, healthy plants, and also about your the kitchen remains. So like the fruits, vegetables, 
uh, banana peels, and potato peels, of course, that always healthy fruits and vegetables and peels, not the ones that they are already full of fungus and, and other microorganisms. And if you don't want to make this step, uh, so you can just chop the the left the like the leftover of your your garden your plants and all these harvest remains you can just chop it to accelerate the process of decompose decomposing this and just incorporate again to the, the same soil or the same substrate that you have in your garden and if you need to do amendments remember about correcting the ph and putting more organic matter and just what the the soil needs something that the soil needs at this point here is the moment where you can take a sample and take the ph tested you can have analyze uh, the soil analysis and you can have this this part about soil these activities this pr cultural practice about soil this is the time so the fall in this way everything that you need to do right now is going to be effective all the months from the for example if you start october so now you have uh, october no november december january and all these months because the amendment something that the soil needs is not just changing from one week to the next week it's not the same like when we are treating water for example so this is why it's very important to do it uh, right uh, in the fall or at the end of the fall uh, all this process about the soil and some tips and recommendations about how to start our garden in new york state and is always check the nutritional and environmental uh, requirements for uh, each uh, species or each of the plants that you are going to grow so you want for example this this year i want uh, peppers and i want beans and i want green beans and tomatoes and some flowers around the garden so okay now my the homework is to start reading about one by one the requirements and in that way okay do i can i do it or not or what what do i need to do uh, again the example of the avocado so if i really want to plant avocados but in that case is not uh, this is not the place to be growing avocados so unfortunately in that case uh, not like why even try so this is helpful before starting your garden before going to buy plants before going to buy seeds and start investing time money and effort in your garden uh, number two the tip number two is make a soil analysis before starting your garden and if you're already you have your garden okay uh, you can do it also at that point but uh, the recommendation before starting your garden so in that way you know what is happening with your plants uh, with your soil and in that way a healthy soil is the same that a healthy plant just taking this in mind and if you don't know how to take uh, the plants uh, the samples for, for the plants for the soil uh, the cost if you have questions about that you feel free always to reach out the near the closest cooperative extension office that we are always happy to help and so anytime you just bring the samples or call or contact by email and we are happy to help check also the local regulations for um, agricultural products and this is especially about pesticides because sometimes we can buy a uh, product online and they come from another state and probably they are fine in another state but in new york state is probably is prohibited is not allowed to be applying this chemical so in that case um, check the the regulations if you don't know about this and you're not sure about if can i apply this chemical or not uh, also you can reach out your cooperative extension and ask about this uh, when you're buying from the store some store close to to you so yeah pro these products they are allowed to be sold in the area but this about checking regulation is more when you're buying from another areas 
event, something that uh, that happened to me that I was buying online. Just it was a biological product, a biological fungicide, and at the end, I didn't realize that it was coming from like Thailand or another country. So in that case, look, even more to pay attention about this and not being applied in something that probably is not allowed in this in this state. So, well, you know, uh, I was lucky that it was just biological product, no problem at all, but this can happen with some chemical products. So just to avoid uh, problems with just like sometimes even legal products about applying some products uh, without the permits, without the, maybe a product that is banned here, I just always consult before buying these products. The forecast is going to be your friend is going to be a great tool when you're gardening because before starting uh, removing weeds, fertilizing, uh, watering, doing something in your garden, you can check always your forecast in this way, you know, if it's going to be raining, because for example, I want to apply a, uh, a uh, pesticide, an insecticide on my plants, and I want to spread the the herbicide to the herbicide, not the insecticide today. And tomorrow is going to be raining, so I'm losing time and the money of this product because after the rain, I need to apply again. Some products they we need to apply after a rain, after being raining, right? So the forecast is going to be your best friend when you are gardening. Uh, also, when we are moving plants indoors, especially now in these winter months, they don't need to be, um, you don't need to be applying fertilizer, you don't need to be overwatering. And this is a mistake that we can do in these cold months with the house plants. And is overwatering and fertilizer. Plants, they don't need to be fertilized in this period. If you do, it's just low quantities. And you can also always read and Google it and read or just ask. And you will find that they don't need like much fertilizer in the cold months. Also for be repotting the plants. And keep for like just the last tip, just keep a gardening journal. This is going to be helpful in that way. Probably you don't, you don't remember absolutely everything that you have done in the garden, especially when you stop gardening for a period of time, one, two years, and then you start again. Uh, now with the gardening journal, you know what is in there or oh, what mistakes do I need to fix or work or what, what is not worthy to be doing in this garden, what is good or the, the plants, the pest, the microorganisms, everything you have in this journal. And this is a valuable uh, information that you have from your garden, your local area, your plants. And this is something that even can be uh, given to your next generation. If you have your farm or your, your space, your garden, it's valuable information. This is going to save time in the future, time, effort, and money. For uh, well, now the last part, when I mention about the soil samples, uh, events, events that we are doing, uh, clinics, classes, events, uh, we are all year round doing events, doing classes, and always uh, being just around teaching about gardening, about was uh, many. In my case, gardening, uh, horticulture, uh, also the master program, master gardener program, uh, but also just the cooperative extension. We have just in general agricultural topics, agricultural areas. And for any question that you have for every anything that you need for your garden, for your animals, uh, questions about the regulations, about agricultural businesses, about whatever you need, feel free to reach out here. This is uh, my contact. And this is the QR code for our Cornell Cooperative Extension uh, website. Also our Master Gardener program and with our 
master gardeners and the professional team from Cornell Cooperative Extension. We also, we always are happy to help. So now just, uh, let's stop the recording and some questions that you, you have about